Hello and welcome once more to Understanding Spirit. It's a Thursday and doesn't it come round quick? And we've had a strange phenomenon happen here today. Now, I had to look it up on Google what it was and I found out it's called rain. <laughs> yes, we've had some rain. <laughs> wow. And you think it lasted about 15 minutes. Oh well, can't get too greedy. Anyway, I've got a very special guest uh, this week. Uh, it's not only a guest, he's a really good friend. And we used to do a radio show together on Paramania Radio. It's Dave Ashworth. Hello, Dave. Hello, Alan. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Lo- lovely to hear your voice again, Dave. Good yeah, time. and it's great to be back on the radio with you. It's been a long time, hasn't it? I should say it has. <clears throat> For our regular um, listeners, um, you remember Dave from uh, the Emerald Art Radio that we used to do together on a Friday evening. And mm. uh, we, we really did cover some deep subjects then, didn't we? Um, we've got into some very deep stuff you you would come up with these questions <laughs> <laughs> and i i'd think how am i going to answer that but as usual the guidance came through and we got answers <laughs> and, and, and we and we we touched on some quite controversial stuff and uh it's not something i'd have gone into by myself i don't think you know if i was writing a book or articles i think some of those subjects that spirit uh through the questions at us with were, were you know they're really deep things yeah, it's all right uh, i was just hesitating then for a moment because i was just looking in the chat room uh we've got paramedic in there colin um i colin and we've got our um mentor uh, Dr. Dave Erickson, and he's just written there. We're actually live on Facebook at the moment. So, hello, every, all the listeners. <laughs> Indeed, hello, all the listeners. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, we had used <coughs> we used to get into some uh, deep uh, discussions, um, yeah. but I'm interested. Well, what's been going on since um, we stopped doing Emerald Art Show? Because I know life's always changing with you, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, it seems so a long time ago now that when you when you just said we used to have a radio show together, I had to think, did we? <laughs> it was. Uh, it just seems ages ago. But that's um, that's the nature of life when you're going through permanent transformation. You're constantly letting go. And uh, and at one point, if you remember, uh, I suggested we started a, a new radio show. You got a platform set up within 24 hours, and then um, Guidance said, no, you can't do it. <laughs> the time isn't right, so we had to cancel that. Do you recall that, Alan? I do, I do very much so, yes, I do. Oh, you know what spirit's like for tripping you up if you try and go in the wrong direction at the wrong time. So I'm sure that the time will be right, but it's not right at the moment. Well, you see, I do understand that. You know, you, you know that I was um, quite ill for quite a long time, mm. and it actually took Lee. You know, my stepson. You know, Lee. Anyway, mm. yeah, um, yeah. It actually, he only said it to me about a month ago. He says I've been thinking about that. You know, that you uh, how you were because I, I was thinking it was the Aussie flu and that, but my symptoms were never anything exactly the same as what I could read or anybody else that was going through it. Mm. And he said, I don't believe for one minute that that is what you had. So I really think it was a big transformation in mm. your energy levels to where spirit wanted you to be. And now looking back on it, I, I can see that. Um, yeah. But it, it mm. just knocked me off my feet for such a long time. So yeah, and uh, and you can't see it at the time because you're in the process. Uh, other people can often see it outside, but as soon as you were telling me about that, uh, I thought, yeah, that's deep transformational stuff. The universe just hit you so hard that you have to stop dead yeah. and and go through the process. Yeah, I know two two people, uh, a very long. Uh, a very long time colleague uh, at the moment is is just going through horrendous processes and another young lad who i didn't know but was uh, just only a few months ago was in hospital at death's door okay. and um and uh he needed an operation and the surgeon said we can't operate because he won't survive it and we think he won't survive anyway 
And then an amazing thing happened. This, uh, his father was telling me how he was uh, on a day-by-day basis. And, and this 90-odd-year-old chap came into his private room one night and, and just sat with him for a minute and said, I'm going to pray for you and you'll get better. And when his father told me this the next day, I absolutely knew instantly I could help him. Mm. It's like you're just waiting for a sign. Yeah. And, and and the sign doesn't just come in words. It comes in, in the energy and the feeling. And I thought, yeah, I might be able to help this lad. Yeah. So I said to his dad, uh, you know, well, his dad didn't. His dad's a good friend of mine, but he doesn't know what I do. Right. <laughs> you know, you don't you don't tell people in the ordinary mortal world, do you? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so I said to him, you know, I might be able to help him. And his dad's an atheist, but you know, we laugh about that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and I said, I don't judge it. You know, that's your journey. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I started working with the lad, and the transformation has been fantastic you know it's only three months ago and uh he's already stepping back into working oh, it's yeah. like just amazing yeah. yeah and you know it's um it's the universe you're doing it's it's uh, i don't take the credit for it i just manipulate a few things and give a person an essence and and the feedback that comes back is always phenomenal but you know in the old the old saying don't take the credit don't take yeah. the blame That's you know that. we just we're just intri- we're just oh. instruments that uh, that uh, through our uh, commitment to the path and to light, uh, we have the opportunity to act as those instruments, bring light into certain situations. And we can't help in every situation, but you you absolutely know the ones that you can help with. Well, it's funny you should say that, but you know a similar kind of situation. Only this was with uh, Anne's uncle, um, her mm-hmm. dad's brother he's 92 Mm. and going back it's been nearly a month now uh, he he was diagnosed with terminal cancer about 18 months ago and he was Mm. given about three months Mm. I'll tell you something to start with yeah Uh, (coughs) and um, he was rushed Mm. into Sandwell Hospital you know in West Mm. Bromwich and um, Anne and I were busy and we couldn't get in in there but it was Finding out how he was through Anne's brother, uh, through Clive, and uh, and uh, Anne and I were both sending healing energy over to Bill. And uh, anyway, we finally got in to see him about ten days ago, and uh, and he was looking well. And apparently, they'd only given him a seventeen percent chance of surviving this operation. And if mm. he hadn't, didn't have it, well, it'd, they said he'd been dead within 48 hours anyway so it's yeah. a no-win type of thing yeah and he came through the operation and yeah. uh, we went in to see him and uh, he's really pleased and he and he, he looked at me he says you've been sending me healing haven't you <laughs> <laughs> i just looked at him he said i felt it alan thank you i said it's okay it's fine and yeah. uh, but it, I, it it's quite a and and then he said to me he says how are you? And I said, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. He says, no, I know you're all right health-wise now. And I mm. hadn't been in touch for such a long time, you know. Mm. And he says, the course of your life, what you're doing, is incredible. How do you manage it? <laughs> and he's this guy who's like almost on his deathbed, you know, type of thing. Yeah. And that whole visit was just bizarre because he, he sat up in bed and he went... I'm going to be sick, I'm going to be sick. So I, I turned round, and on the table at the side was like, you know, those things they are for men to wean. And yeah, was, yeah, yeah. And those two there, and I, th- I thought, oh, it's empty. I picked it up, no, it wasn't empty, it went on the side of me. I was soaked. <laughs> <Slightly>. <laughs> soaked in Bill's <laughs> way. So I went out in the corridor, uh, got the cold water out of one of these basins, and that created yeah. such a force, he went all over the floor. And I was mocking <laughs> it all. You know, not, not one person even took a bit of notice of what was going on. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, after we finished the visit, uh, Anne was going out, and he just called me back. And he said, Come on, get on. So he pulled the curtain around, so I did. He said, I do need a wee. I said, all right, okay. 
So, and then I was looking while he was doing that. I was looking at the the, the board and looking. I saw his notes, and it had got Robert Compton. And then I looked at it. I said, "Why, your name's Robert?" I says, "You're Bill, aren't you?" He says, "No, I'm not Bill." I said, "But we've always called you Bill." He says, "Yeah, I know. Everybody does." <laughs> he says, but that ain't my name. He says, that was Fred's middle name, William. I said, yeah, no. He said, yeah. I said, well, why do everybody call you Bill? And he just a wry smile, and he said, it's complicated, Alan. And they never told me. <laughs> 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 he's at home now. He's recovering. He's at home. That's great, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah there's some characters, and, and he was a, he's a very spiritual and strong-minded gentleman, and he's a gentleman, yeah. you know. Mm. The, mm. So that just reminded me, you talking about that young lad, you know. So, yeah, yeah. You know, it, uh, and and mm. we don't understand how spirit actually really works, do we? You no. Know? You haven't got a clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works in mysterious ways, yeah. Yeah, it really does. So, it's wonders uh, to perform. <laughs> now, when we were talking privately, just before coming on the air, did you say uh, that you're starting to work or are working on a couple of new books? Yeah, I've just finished one actually, right. but uh, but um, I'm putting it out anonymously. Right. So um, <laughs> so, I'm not gonna, so I'm not going to so I'm not going to tell you anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. So, uh, is it so controversial? It, your friends, but you now do it. <laughs> no, it's actually a novel. Believe oh, it or not, right. and uh, and. Um, no, it's um, it's it's an interesting process. Uh, the book started Midwinter's Eve on uh, in 2014 uh, when Harriet, you know Harriet yeah. from the Netherlands, Harriet called me on Skype on the winter solstice, and uh, she has a couple of young girls that come and stay with her. Uh, she used to look after them uh, some years ago, and they come and stay every now and again. They have time together the girls and Harriet yeah. and they decided they'd, they'd call me on Skype and, and the little girl says to me tell us a story and I thought bah, I don't know any stories I'm hopeless at storytelling anyway with, within seconds this story came out of my mouth <laughs> And the next morning, I thought, well, Harriet sent me an email. So you've got to write that. It's a brilliant story. Yes. And, and, that, and that following morning as well, I, I thought, I need to write that up. So I wrote the first chapter, and I couldn't get it right. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until the summer, two years later, the summer of 2016, I was, I was up in the North Netherlands, and we were having a, a week up there looking at the old stone monuments and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hoonabedden, they're called, but uh, like our burial chambers. Yeah. And uh, we were having a week just researching these and looking at them and having some fun. And then one night, I was doing her emails, and I couldn't get an email. I couldn't get an internet connection up there. So I just opened up that story again. And um, I thought, oh, I'll have a look at this while, you know, she's busy doing emails. Yeah. And, and... I'd not been able to get that first chapter right for, what, almost two years by this time. And then it just came. It just wrote itself onto the page. And I knew I'd write the rest of the book then. So it had taken all that time. And when I came back to the UK, I started writing the story. And um, the energy that came through me writing this, I was in tears for the whole book for over a year. I mean, it was just incredible. It came from such a deep place through the heart. And and even now, you know, if I, I've had a few people read it. It's been through several proofing processes. I've got several reviews on it. Yeah. And, uh, and even now, if I hear anybody reading it, I just burst into tears. It touches me so deeply. It's incredible. And, uh, and the people that have read it so far, they kind of vary between people who are deeply spiritual and have walked the path for a long time and other people that aren't really spiritual at all so it's good to get a, a cross section of people and uh, and the deeply spiritual one as i say is touching so deep the energy in it that it's it's just unbelievable 
So, um, so I've got a few um, bits of feedback. I know it's, uh, I know it's a good story, as yeah. it were, yeah. and and it, I put it to. It took me about a year to write it once I got started on it, and then uh, I've been just polishing it and fine tuning it. And I've actually got some finished copies, but I just decided a few days ago I was going to go through the whole thing again and edit the punctuation. It just, it's the universe just pushing me to polish it a little bit more and a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I'm going to publish it through Amazon. And uh, prior to it being published, it'll I'll publish it around about November. Yeah. But prior to that, I'm going to send out a little free book on uh, on Kindle. Uh, kind of advertising it, but also with some um, with some nice quotations in it. So I've just about finished the uh, the Kindle version, and that'll probably go out in about three weeks. Exactly. But um, but yeah, I I decided I was going to. It features certain characters, and um, and so really, I've made the characters the author of the book really and i've taken a back uh, a step back from it so uh so people might think who are listening well that's not marketing your book very well <laughs> i just feel this is the way to do it to take a step back and let the characters in the book take the lead and uh, they've already got their own facebook page and uh, and website these characters oh, okay. <laughs> so um so what happens is as people get uh uh, the first uh, free Kindle book, and then um, and then the published book will be available print on demand through Amazon or uh, or Kindle as well. Then they'll find out who the author is. That's very intriguing. Very good. It is intriguing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, part of me is saying, "Well, this is mad. You should tell the whole world about it." And the other part says, "No, just take your time. Take your time. Let the characters speak." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's. Uh, <laughs> and you probably find that it'll have a, a deeper impact doing it. Well, that way. we wait and see, don't we? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I tell you, tell you one, the, one of your books. Uh, one of your, I would say one of your first books, uh, yeah. "Dancing with the Devil" when you um, allow in the light. Yeah, um, which I've got a copy of, a signed copy of um, <laughs> from you many years ago. Yeah. And um, I must admit that had a um, a kind of a, a deep impact on me, Dave. Um, mm. You know, it. Uh, and I suppose if you're going back, if you, sorry, perhaps I'm using the wrong words. But if you're going back to basics, shall we say, with yeah. um, you know, dealing mm. with uh, unseen energies, I think mm. I think that book of yours put it really in a nutshell, really. Uh, mm. about what what you're dealing with so yeah. do you find now that the, you that you're moving on and doing these different things um are you are you still um having people who are troubled by these energies or do you find that your um your development has led you away from that it, well, the development has led me a long way away from that. I mean, I wrote that book in 1998, and it was published in 2000, so it's been out, been out there for 18 years. Yeah. And it's interesting, uh, about two or three years ago, um, there's a couple of people that um, send me some questions sometimes as a kind of expert, if you like, for want of a better description, when they're writing articles for magazines, and, and they were saying about three years ago, you, you know, this subject is is hot stuff these days, but back when you wrote this, nobody would have touched it. And I said, well, that's right, they wouldn't. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I, I still sell copies of that book, and I, I put one in the Post to America a couple of days ago to somebody over there. And uh, But, yeah, to answer that question, my own develop has taken me a long way from from that kind of work. You you've got to keep letting go of stuff in order for the universe to bring you new things. Yeah. But uh, occasionally I get I still get inquiries for that kind of work, but I uh, forward those on to people that I've trained over the years. Yeah. yeah. And um, and that's kind of how I deal with that. And the only people I work with these days who are, are people who are. Um, 
on a, a deep spiritual path and who are really looking how to open the light within their hearts those are those are the people that the universe sends me and uh, and and that's where i'm supposed to be working at the moment but as i was saying to you earlier um i'm i think well i, I know i'm in transformation again well we, it never stops does it but sometimes it's um sometimes it's more intense than at other times and uh, and I think the universe is pushing me more towards the writing now. So, for example, the, the novel I've just written, I, I've already started the second uh, novel in that series, and, and a very good psychic friend of mine said she can th see three titles in this, so this uh, there may well be a third book. And so it might be that... Uh, the book becomes uh, successfully enough for me to trans transfer totally into writing and not so much um, working with people, although I do, I do love that, you know. Um, I mean, the work I've been doing recently, it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper into the past lives and really finding out, you know, why people are troubled in this life through processes they've been through in previous lives, and I, I find it quite fascinating. But the depth I go into uh, with those type of cases does burn my energy a little bit. So I have to balance it. I have to be a bit careful. <clears throat> and, it, and it's just because we're getting older, Alan. <laughs> older? What's that? Older. <laughs> I'm, not older, I'm not older in the mind. I'm still 18, I think. <laughs> but uh, I understand every, but every, everything else has got a bit older. <laughs> <laughs> But it's funny enough, you're on about, you know, dealing with people from past lives and that. But mm. uh, I do find a lot of my work now involves that type of thing as well. And yeah. although I still travel up and down the country, I mean, uh, we'll be in uh, Swansea next Tuesday. Um, mm -hmm. But majority of the work um, is done at a distance, um, either via Skype or via email and that mm. and I do get quite a few people who um, have issues that can be traced back to not just one previous experience but mm. sometimes two or three so yeah, yeah I, I do understand that one um, mm. completely you know yeah um, it, it it's kind of an alteration in in the type of people that actually come to you yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. So mm. yeah, it uh, it is funny that how the universe does decide. Um, mm. Okay, it's time that you alter. They also allow you to make wrong decisions, um, like as I was saying to you just before I come on air. You know, um, I've resigned as a uh, a priest in the um, Antioch Church. Uh, mm. For, for the main reason is that I didn't think it was right for me, so I've gone back to the Valentinian Gnostic, uh, yeah. which I feel comfortable with. But yeah. I mean, so life doesn't always follow smoothly. I think sometimes you just have to. Um, I, th I think the universe sends you, gives you a choice, you, and then you have to decide whether it's the right thing for you. I don't actually think there's such a thing as a wrong choice. I think it's a, a case of the choice is there, you take it and you learn from it and then you move on. Yeah, every every one of these uh, situations is a learning experience. Yeah. And as you say, I, I don't think there's any such thing as, uh, as making a mistake. It's just entering into a learning experience and sometimes we take a choice on that path and and it's not the best choice for us and the sooner we we uh, appreciate that and learn from it and change course the better and the whole trick is to keep on that vibrational path but sometimes the universe wants you to experience things on uh, uh, by taking a, a turn off your main path to experience something and say yeah well i can see why I've gone down this path now, but it's definitely not right. So I'll get back on the right path. Yeah, yeah spot on. That's exactly that's exactly how I feel about the last twelve months. Um, yeah, you know, um, and you know when uh, you came down to my original ordination into the Valentinian, 
mm. uh, Gnostic Church. That just felt totally comfortable and right. And, mm. uh, yeah, I do believe um, the higher realms uh, did get me to divert. Um, perhaps, I don't... J just to see what it was like on the uh, the other religious side. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps, you know. That's right. When you find out that the vibration isn't where you should be. Yeah. yeah. That doesn't mean it's wrong for the people that are already in that organisation. That would be perfect for where they are. But yeah. you've, di you've dipped your toe in that water and found it's not quite to the temperature that you feel comfortable in, and so you've stepped out again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and, uh, you know, in the years that we've known each other, uh, 1996, Dave. Ah, is when we met. <laughs> Twenty-two years. Yeah, that's yeah. A... yeah, we've grown old together, type of thing. Even though we're apart. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a long time. It is, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the silly thing is, I don't know if you find this with uh, a spiritual journey. Occasionally, like I've just said that. It doesn't actually seem like that kind of time frame. It almost no. seems like, you know, a year ago or something. Yeah. It's like you look back and you think, where did that go? And, and because you're learning all the time and you, you're deeply embedded into the process of working with light. It's like every day working with, with light and working with clients. And I was uh, talking to a colleague today who'd come over from... Uh, uh, well, she lives in Colombia now, but she was living in New York prior to that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, she came up today and we spent a day, you know, chatting over old times. And she said, how long is it now, Dave, since you were doing this work? And I said, well, it's nearly 30 years. Mm -hmm. Well, where, where did that go? I don't even remember most of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, cause, I mean, uh, Anna and I found out about you on that uh, TV programme. Uh, when you was going into people's homes, um, yeah, you know, uh, Russell Grant was doing the talk over, wasn't he? Uh, he was, yeah. I, right. You know, and I can't even remember what that was called. I did, I did two uh, house cleansing type yeah. programs, and I can't remember the name of either of them now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember it, the name of it. I remember it, and I, Anna and I looked at each other and we said, "Yeah, it, he's the guy we've got to get in touch with." Yeah, and then you it. had the misfortune of meeting me, and it's gone on since then. That's it. Yeah, it's never stopped since. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the proper stuff eh? with my special guest, um, a visionary, and I'm not being flippant about that because Dave Ashworth is. Um, thank you for joining me, Dave. You're very welcome. Thank you for your invitation, Alan. It's uh, it's great to get on here again after such a long time. It's uh, it's really good fun, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. Uh, before we go any further, um, if anybody wants to get hold of you, you know your website, contact details. Would you like to tell everybody? Yeah, it's uh, www. Uh, I think I know it. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> David Ashworth. Guru. <laughs> Right, okay, that's brilliant. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's it. All the W's and uh, David Ashworth Guru. Yeah, and um, well, uh, as we were speaking before, uh, the last kind of really deep transformation I went through was um, where are we now? Twenty eighteen. It, it would be twenty sixteen. It was just after I'd stepped away. The Emerald Heart School of Enlightenment, which of course some of the listeners will know that I founded, and I've passed that on now to people I trained. And the universe told me it was time to let go and move away. And you know, when you've put 13 years of your life into developing it and growing it and bringing forth teachings from the universe, you ask the question, "Well, what am I going to do now?" Right. <laughs> and. Um, and uh, I stepped out in the December of, uh, of uh, 2016, and by, I think it was the February, I'd got my answer, and uh, a colleague came 
to stay for a few days from Germany. And um, and we were discussing, you know, well, what are you going to do now, Dave? And I said, well, I'm not dead certain, but I have a feeling that um, the universe is bringing me to the point where I can transmit Darshan. And Darshan, for those who may not know, is a, an Indian term, which means a, a divine blessing. And the, the blessing is given uh, through the eyes. It is delivered from heart to heart, but through the eyes. And it's interesting because uh, that was, as I say, beginning of 2017. But I wrote the book Vision in 2008, I think. And when Darshan came, I realized that that's what that book was all about. It's like, wow. You know, the universe was already sowing the seed in 2008, and there you are, nine years later. And, uh, and, and what happened, as I was discussing this with my colleague, uh, she said, well, have you tried it out yet? <laughs> and I said, no, but I've had a few indicators. The, I'd done a, uh, a winter retreat in Lanzarote for a group of people. Uh, the year before and and at certain points in that retreat I was being guided to look deeply into people's eyes so I would go around the circle while teaching and talking and just look into their eyes for a couple of seconds and so that was the first inclination that the universe was saying you need to start to look into people's eyes and so uh so my colleague said, well, shall we try it out then? <laughs> because this is how you find out, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> road, road testing it. So I said, yeah, well, how should we do it? And she said, well, how do you think? I said, well, typically what happens is in Darshan is the student kneels before the teacher and um, you gaze into each other's eyes and the universe delivers the, uh, the blessing from heart to heart through the eyes. So... Uh, we kind of got ourselves into a meditative state and uh, and then she came and knelt in front of me and I kind of felt a bit awkward. It's like, you know, it, it, it makes you feel that that person is somehow lower than you when they're kneeling in front of you, but she insisted this is the way we need to do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, well, let's do it that way then. And then it was only about, oh, a few seconds really, 10 seconds at the most, and we both felt that the transmission happened. She got up and sat down on the sofa. I was in a, tra in, in, in a chair. And the light that suddenly poured out of my heart was just overwhelming. I mean, you know what it's like working with light. And I've, I've been through many very, very deep and profound transformations, but nothing ever like this. And this light was it was like somebody turning a tap on inside the heart and it was flooding the whole of my body and um and part of your consciousness saying is saying that's enough so you can stop now you can stop now and the other part is saying don't stop don't stop you've waited you know 30 years for this <laughs> yes. and anyway the light just came to this point where um it, it, it had poured all it needed to pour in, into out of the heart and into the body. And I went into this total bliss state for maybe about an hour. Uh, my colleague, she, uh, she went into this complete bliss state for probably a similar, a similar time. And as we came round out of that, we just looked at each other and said, that's just off the planet. It's just ridiculous. So I thought, well, that's a one-off. So we need to find out, is this what, what I'm going to be doing next? So I phoned up my colleague, Tim Dyson, in London. And Tim's taken over the, uh, he stepped into my shoes to run the Emerald Heart School of Enlightenment after I'd uh, stepped out. Yeah. And Tim's helped me with lots of things over the years. He's, he's really been my right-hand man on all our European tours, teaching and that kind of thing. And so I phoned Tim up. And I said, Tim, can you organize some people in London for a darshan? We need to find out whether this works or not. So he, he very quickly uh, sent out an invitation and 24 people signed up immediately for it. And so I went down to London and, uh, and Tim said, well, how are we going to do this? I said, well, typically what normally happens is uh, 
the teacher prepares in a, in a, a separate room while somebody prepares the group so namely that's you you're preparing the group and then when they're ready and you've got them into a nice steady deep state meditative state i'll come in and you can bring them up one at a time to kneel in front of me and um and we'll see what happens <laughs> so nice. so uh i duly transmitted the darshan and then went out of the room again and you know i was um I was waiting there until uh, they came up and and uh, gave me a report. But during the whole darshan, I was sat there thinking, I can't feel a thing. And you know what it's like. We, we're really tuned into energy and light. We can feel the whole thing. I sat there and I thought, I cannot feel anything. I have no idea whether this is working or not. Yeah. And so I'm kind of sat in the room waiting for somebody to come up. And in fact, my colleague from New York, who was here today, she'd come to London to experience this. She said, there's no way I was going to miss this. And so she, uh, she'd she been helping Tim with the preparation. And then, and then they were doing um, a bit of feedback after to see what people experienced. And, and Lynn... Uh, came upstairs and you know knocked on the door and came in so i'm sitting there how was it how was it <laughs> <No. laughs> she said it was absolutely mind-blowing you know quite a number of the people had total experiences of being touched by god and you sit there and think how does that work yeah. you know how yeah. does it work how can people have such massively profound experiences but yet i don't feel anything yeah. and so um so I thought that, um, okay, well, um, we know it works, so maybe that's what I'm going to do next, is this Darshan transmissions. And the guidance uh, bid me to organize um, distant Darshan on a Sunday night. So I've been doing the distant Darshan on a Sunday night ever since, so, you know, almost a couple of years now. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, and so I thought, okay, well, that's the next uh, phase. It's going out into the world and, and transmitting darshan. And uh, for the first year, there were lots of little events that I did here and there. And then it suddenly switched off and the universe said, that's enough of that. You know it works. You don't need to do that now. So again, you're back to square one. It's like, okay, what, what do I do to earn my living now? Yes, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so carried on doing the distant darshan that's that seems great that's in line with what the universe wants and at the same time um i was given about a year and a half ago i was just given these words circle of light and i knew what that was i knew it was a, a spiritual development course but i had to develop it but it's like i've already developed all this stuff previously i've been you know a, spiritual teacher for such a long time so at the end of the day all you're really trying to teach people is how the universe works and the universal laws and th the problem with universal laws is you might be able to understand them intellectually but that's not how it works no, you actually true. have to become the light itself the light of the laws you live the laws until you become the laws and that's when you get to a point where you can command the universe to uh, you know as we were saying before when I mean, there's distant healing and there's distant healing and it works on many different levels and and the nature of becoming the light just takes you up to a point where you you literally do command the universe and so circle of light i put that together as an, an amazing course and i had it ready to go out uh, last christmas and we're now in august yeah? yeah and the minute i'd finished putting it together the universe said well you can shelve that for a bit now <laughs> <laughs> yes. so here we go again yeah. so i mean i've gone so far down the line this year that i've basically forgotten what most of that course is about but i know it's not dead in the water I'm still going through a transformation, the, the transformation I need to go through in order to bring it into the world at the right level. But, you know, the universe sends you lots of connections. I'm, I've been working with a number of people in America, and I know that these are 
all part of the next process. I have to develop these connections to the point where these people can help me bring it into the world, but but bringing it into America as well. Yeah. And and although I've had you know many clients and students uh, from America in the past, I've never been there as a teacher. And uh, and I think this course anyway, it it won't initially involve me as being a teacher in the traditional sense of turning up with a room full of students and teaching that way. It'll be online. Mm, yeah. And so that's, uh, so at the moment, I'm writing books. Um, I'm doing my Sunday Distant Darshan, which is fantastic. Just recently, I've had a whole load of, um, of uh, testimonials coming in, and um, I've been trying to put those, share those, this last couple of weeks through the, the Mailchimp software but that's been acting up right. so <laughs> so uh, I've had to try and sort problems out with that but then again we've got all these planets in retrograde at the moment <laughs> yeah and also you know with with, with a thing like the internet um, yeah and uh, with yourself you know um, doing the good work you do and the type of work that I do and and does and that um, what I've noticed is that if you've got something important to say, uh, the negative energies will try and delay you. I won't say they stop you because it, it happens eventually, but they mm. really do try and delay you from getting there, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, in fact, it was a very, very strange thing about... Uh, about three weeks ago, I think it was. Well, you know where I live. You've been here, yeah, yeah. and uh, and um, and uh, it's pretty well clean and clear. This place, you know, there's a lot of light around it. Yeah. And uh, but I woke up this one night. And I thought, what on earth is that? You know, this energy was touching me, and, I th and it took me a minute or two to wake up and figure out what it was. I thought it's a spirit. There's a spirit in the house. I thought, how's he got in here? Well, it was a he. I knew it was a he. How's he, how he got through? It's not that I put the defences up, but the universe does. And I thought, what's he doing in here? You know. Yeah. Anyway, I got up out of bed and, you know, tuned myself in a bit and said, okay, where is he? What room's he in? Let's have a, ch <laughs> let's have a chat chat with him. And I thought, how's he got in? And, you know, the guy just, just said, oh, he's just a wanderer. He's just kind of found his way in here yeah. so I thought oh well, that's strange so I had a chat with him and moved him towards the light and then only a few nights ago I was walking up the stairs all the lights were out so it was dark and I got to the top of the stairs and just got a strange feeling and I thought what's that it's, it was almost like a fear of the dark when you're a child yeah. I thought don't be ridiculous you're not afraid of the dark Anyway, I put the lights on, did what I had to do, and came downstairs. Never thought any more about it. Then in the middle of the night, again, I woke up, and I thought, it's a young girl. There's a young girl in the room. And so it was a very, very gentle energy. So I, I, I didn't even almost wake up properly. Yeah. I just, you know, had a word with her and, you know, just called some guides in and said, you know, can you just have a, just help this girl over to the light? Yeah. And anyway, almost before the words were out of my mouth, she'd gone. But I thought, how strange is that? I haven't encountered a spirit in, like, donkey's years. Yeah. And there's two in the space of a month. And I thought, oh, what's that all about? That's strange. And so uh, I haven't got an answer to that yet. But, um, you know, it's just one of those funny little things, isn't it? Have you, have you thought, this has just, uh, ju just come into my head, that it's almost like... Um, a reconnection in a way because of you going off in different directions just um, shall we say God's way of saying you know Dave yeah th you're meant to go on these other paths of course you are but uh, uh, just, just remember uh, your roots uh, that are there and your connection and it just came into my head that that could well be that the spirits have been just brought in not to cause any harm, discomfort or, or problems for you, but just saying, look, you are still connected to, to us. We are still about. So, yeah well, I, I, yeah, well, I think that's a good confirmation because I had considered that. And, and the universe does do that from time to time. You know, it'll 
helping you, a, a client or a student, with um, with issues that you used to deal with years ago. And I see that just as a, as, a, as you say, as a reminder, don't forget your roots. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, my roots after my awakening were, I was thrown straight away into dealing with dark forces. You Same know, way. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about them. You were to blame like, for that, Mr. Edgeworth, for me. Well, I am, I am, yeah, this is true. <laughs> yeah, but as you know from your own path, yeah, we were both kind of, that's where we both started off, we're dealing with spirits, dark forces, and, and the universe, I mean, took me through a, a heck of an apprenticeship with that. Well, you know, and, uh, you know when you opened me up, right, uh, uh, when you lived in Presswich, right, in Manchester, mm. and... I got back home, and of course, you know, full of it, you know, to explaining everything that's gone on and that. And only about two, three, about three days after we'd been to you, um, get called to um, um, Anne's brother's wife's friend's mom. Bit of a complicated thing because the the son at the time he was about nineteen, so that makes him about forty now or something like that. Um, he was being thrown around his bedroom and uh, in the middle of the night yeah and that was mm. the first thing i did spiritually <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what, what an introduction day well thrown in at the deep end alan <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> same as me i was thrown in at the deep end <laughs> although i don't i'd always felt i had a deep connection even as a child with the with the christ energies and jesus in particular uh, i wasn't religious in any sense even though i'd gone to uh, a church of england school none of it made any sense to me i didn't understand the the uh, the church protocols and the services so, it, it was it was completely alien but yeah i i always knew i had that really deep connection and um and so you know when i got thrown into I, into the deep end with with my awakening i mean it, it was a horrendous process for that first year it completely um well destroyed everything that i that i had in me in my life you know the marriage went the house went the business went everything went everything was taken away and uh and of course you you learn as you're going on uh, and growing through the spiritual path but if you get attached to anything it's gonna go yes, <laughs> so, so the, the nature of the game is don't become attached to anything or if you realize there is attachment growing just let go doesn't mean you have to let go of whatever it is but you just let go of the attachment mm. and and through letting go of attachment we're in a place where we can constantly constantly transform or respond to what the universe uh, uh, to the way the universe wants us to be to be guided or move forward into our next expression of our divine selves. Yes, yeah. And um, you know, and as you as you open up more and more and more, I mean, I get moments where I feel like I'm kind of I belong to the universe, mm. not belong to myself on just this planet. And sometimes I see humanity, well, I see it very clearly, as if I'm l looking from, you know, very high up from heaven, for want of a better description, and just watching the game of humanity mm. and just thinking, when, when are they all going to wake up? <laughs> you know, you and, and see, I'm, I'm see not, what's just beyond the nose. <laughs> I'm not just saying this, but, I mean, you know, you, uh, we know each other. We've known each other all, all these years. Uh, yet we've gone through big time spans of not bothering with each other, not falling out or anything, just not bothering, and then finding yeah. ourselves coming back. And although our journeys aren't parallel, they mm. are in some ways very similar. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Th the way that we look at life, humanity, the spirit mm. world, and everything. And mm. it, it it's strange, isn't it, that after not talking for you know, so many months or a couple of years or whatever, you, um, mm. and what's going on isn't that far removed from each other in lots of ways. Mm. Um, no. You know, it's... Um, uh, so, obviously, the, that day that I um, got in touch with Channel 5, I think the, mm. the, the guys was, had already started working then, hadn't they? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you can always see it as you look back. You can always see the steps that the universe was taking. Uh, 
And, and, you, and you get to a point where, for example, with Circle of Light, I can see all the steps that it wants to take. Yeah. But you have to be in the right uh, um, the right point of development in order to take it there so you know you just have to sit back sometimes and learn to relax it's, it's very interesting because when the darshan light burst into me or when to, to put it in its correct focus it's when the light of your own heart suddenly floods out and fills your being um, when that happened it's like my whole life breathed a massive sigh of relief and said, you've arrived at where you've been aiming all this time. And prior to that point, I was absolutely driven for, you know, 20 odd years, nonstop, driven, driven, driven by the light to, to constantly move forward and, and attain and achieve. And at that moment, on that particular day, I thought, that's it. I, it's like I, I'm here. I've, I'm, I don't know where I've arrived, but I know I've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> at, uh, at that point, uh, we've got to end the show because we're out of time, Dave. Um, so, so, so just as I've arrived, I'm leaving. That's right. You, <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? That's about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, please join me tomorrow evening, eleven o'clock, for musical memories. Uh, this week, it's. Uh, pop music from the 70s and 80s. I'm looking forward to that. I enjoy it so much myself. I want to thank you, Dave, for joining me this evening. And uh, no doubt uh, uh, we'll be um, on air again, again at some time in the future. So uh, thank you very Great. much. Okay. Thank you, Alan. It's a pleasure. Okay, bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye.